If you're new to freight brokering, you're likely going to run into a situation where a driver is requesting to be paid for detention at some point. Detention is common in trucking, but what is it? Why do we pay it? And how can we limit how often it gets paid? In this video, I'm gonna break it all down for you. Welcome back to our channel. And if you're new here, welcome to our channel. I'm Nate Cross with Freight360. And in this week's video, we're talking about driver detention pay. If you're new to our channel, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification icon to make sure you stay up to date on all of our latest content. So what is detention? Simply put, detention pay is an accessorial charge that the driver is paid when they have to wait an extended amount of time at a pickup or delivery location. The general accepted amount of time that a driver is expected to wait without any additional pay is usually around two hours. This is what's called free time. Anything after that two hours will typically result in the driver asking for extra money or detention pay. Detention exists to compensate drivers for their extra time that is wasted, which can lead to some snowball effects, and we'll cover those later on. So why does detention happen? There's a variety of scenarios that can cause detention, but I'll cover two of the most common situations, and those are congestion at a customer's facility and delays in production. So first up, congestion at a customer's facility. If a customer's facility is congested or just has poor infrastructure, it makes it very difficult to get trucks in and out in an efficient manner. This is one of the leading causes of detention. It could be caused due to an excessive amount of trucks coming in or out of a facility. It could be a lack of loading doors or just to simply put a poorly laid out shipping and receiving area at a customer's location. If a driver has to wait for other drivers to leave before they can just pull into a dock, time's wasted and everybody loses here. The driver is gonna lose valuable time, which then affects their hours of service. The customer is then risking their shipment from arriving late and all these costs start to add up. Delays in production or a shipment simply just not being right to load can cause detention as well. A driver can show up on time at a facility that has little or no congestion, but if the freight isn't right to load or unload, you're gonna run into the same situation. Time's wasted. It can happen because loading or unloading equipment isn't available, and that could be like a crane or a forklift, or the actual product itself just isn't ready yet. Maybe production is delayed, or perhaps it's not fully packaged and ready to be loaded. Either way, it's frustrating for everybody involved. Like I mentioned earlier, there's a snowball effect that happens when we run into detention situations. The FMCSA regulates the amount of time a driver can spend working each day, and this is called the hours of service rule. So a driver is allowed to work for a total of 14 hours in any given day, but they can only drive for 11 of those 14 hours to account for breaks and rest time. Drivers wanna maximize the amount of time they spend driving so they can maximize their earnings. If a driver runs into a detention situation, they are already wasting two hours plus whatever that detention time is. Let's look at a simple scenario. A driver has to wait three hours to get loaded at a customer facility, which causes them to hit the road later than they had originally planned to head to their next stop. Now, because of this three hour delay, they end up driving 100 miles less that day than they originally planned before they have to park for the night and take their 10 hour reset. The next day, the driver heads to the delivery, which has an appointment time to unload. Now, because of this delay, they miss their appointment and they have to wait to be unloaded until the dock has room for them to pull up and park. This can lead to even more detention time. This can lead to even more issues with the hours of service rule, and the driver could potentially miss their arrival time at the next stop or their load pickup. Now, you can see here how the original waiting time has now snowballed into a worse and worse situation. So here's the deal, nobody likes detention. There's a big misconception that drivers just love getting paid detention because it's extra money on top of what they had originally agreed to haul a load for. But that's not really the case though. See, in this industry, time is money. And a hundred bucks extra for detention for waiting four hours, it's not gonna cut it to account for the amount of money a driver could actually earn if they were driving down the road. So $50 an hour for detention is considered a pretty reasonable rate, but consider how much a driver earns when they're actually driving. 
If a driver earns three bucks a mile on a load and they drive an average of 60 miles an hour, that means they're earning $180 per hour that they're driving. Now, if they have to wait four hours at a customer facility and they're compensated $100 for the two hours of detention, they're losing out on what they could be making if they spent all that time more efficiently. Customers don't like detention either. It costs them money since they are the ones that are usually responsible to pay for it. They also run the risk of delaying the delivery time to their customer on the receiving end. That's why we, as brokers, should try to do everything we can to prevent detention from happening. We should be talking with both our customers and the carrier to verify that a shipment is ready, the appointment and arrival times are still good, and anything else that could possibly result in a delay. Good communication is key in this industry, and it could be the difference between a smooth loading or unloading and delays that result in paying detention. Detention can be frustrating. It can damage relationships between shippers, brokers, and carriers, and we need to do everything we can to prevent it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.